Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching JavaScript for Beginners Lesson 28 and in this video we're going to create a new object from scratch. Alright guys, so in the last lesson you heard me talk about objects as if they were real world objects and we used the analogy of a car and we said that a car has behaviours such as driving, um, accelerating and they were the equivalent of methods on JavaScript objects and it also has properties such as the driver, or the top speed, the length of the car, etc. And they were the equivalent of JavaScript properties on objects, right? So what we're going to do is use that car analogy in this lesson right here, and we're going to create a new object from scratch and give that object some methods and properties, right? So what I want to do is take you back to arrays, first of all. And we saw that if we create an array, it was just something like this, var my array equals new array yeah we can do something like that to create a blank array with nothing in it and then what we do is say my array zero to put something in the zero position that's just a number my array one to put something in the next position which could be a string it could be anything else to put hello etc etc yeah now we can do exactly the same with an object we can say oops var my car because we're going to use the car analogy equals new object all right and what we've done there is create a blank object with nothing in it now to put properties in it and give it methods we use a similar kind of notation to arrays but instead of using these square brackets we use dot notation and instead of these numbers we have names for the properties and methods so the way we give it a property is by saying my car dot um, let's say max speed equals and we'll just give it a number we'll say 50 and that stands for 50 miles an hour right so we can give it another property my car dot driver equals Sean yeah so now we've given it two properties so we could call these let's console dot log just one of them we'll say my car dot driver save that and refresh over here and now it's logging Sean to the console because that's what driver is. Okay, so we've given an object properties. That's all there is to it. And it would be like saying, if you have the string, my string dot length, exactly the same principle. All right, we've just assigned our own names to properties of this my car variable, which is an object. So that's all there is to it. Now we can give the my car object methods also. I remember methods are just behaviors or functions of that object, right? So we could say my car dot drive. This is the function or method name. And then we set it equal to a function, right? And we'll just have the function to console dot log now driving. Okay, so dead simple. And then because you've got this assignment operator here, we do need this semicolon at the end, just like assigning any other variable. If I was to do something like this, var, uh, my var equals, hey, I'd have to put the semicolon at the end. We're doing exactly the same here. We're setting this function variable or this function, this method of the car equal to this function here. So at the end, we have to have this semicolon. And this semicolon here is just the end of this console.log statement, right? So that there is a method of this my car object now. So we can call it. We can say my car dot drive and remember to call a method or a function we always have to specify the parenthesis yeah that calls the function right here I don't put the parenthesis because if I was to do that it would try and call this drive function and currently it doesn't exist okay it only exists after we've assigned it so we don't do that when we're assigning methods but when we call the method we use the parenthesis to call it okay so let's save that and refresh over here and now you can see it prints out or it logs out to the console now driving. And that's this function right here. Okay, so now what we've done is assigned properties and methods to that object. Okay then, so much like arrays, we can also use shorthand notation. You saw with arrays, we could say uh, var my array two equals this, and then just put true uh, 15 high 
just like that. That was the shorthand notation for making an array, right? We can do the same kind of thing with objects. What we'll do is say var my car two this time, and then equals, and then we use the curly braces. That is the shorthand notation for an object, for creating a new object. And then within here, we have to specify the property names and the property values and the method names and the method values, right? So we'll give it the same ones for now. We'll just say max speed. That's the property name. Then we do a colon, right? And then we put the value. And then after we've done that property name and the value pair, we put a comma to say, look, the next value pair is coming up, property value pair. Right, and the next one is driver. And that is, I'll say net ninja for this one. Just make it a little bit different. And in fact, we'll change this as well to 70, right? And then again, comma to say another one's coming up. And finally, and by the way, we don't have to write my car dot here because it already knows it's on the my car, uh, sorry, my car two dot. It already knows it's on the my car object because of this here. We're assigning it to that object, right? Um, so finally, we need that drive method. So we'll say drive colon, and then this is a function, and we'll just copy and paste this right here. So now we've added that function in, and that's the last kind of uh, method name and value pair. So we don't need a comma right at the end here because there's not another one coming. But what we do need is the semicolon right at the end of this closing curly brace where it started there, it ends there. And remember, this is all an assignment, so we end it with this semicolon, right? So that there is another way to assign properties and methods to an object. And let's just make sure this is working. Let's call a couple of things. Let's say my car to dot max speed and we need to log that to the console actually so we'll write console dot log my car dot max speed and then we'll just say my car two dot drive yeah and that should log this to the console now driving again let's put in there all right so let's save that and refresh over here and now we get 70 which is the max speed and now driving again, which is this function right here, okay? So that is the shorthand way of creating objects. Now, this right here does not look very readable to me, so I like to present it in a slightly different way, okay? Uh, all I want to do is just bring each property or each method down onto a new line, just like this. Um, and then the closing curly brace right there and then we've got each separate property or method on a new line and it just looks a lot better because we can see all the methods and properties right there stacked on top of each other so that should make no difference whatsoever let's save again refresh yep exactly the same now just to take this one step further right in fact what we'll do is we'll make this a little bit more readable here and we'll bring that down onto a new line what I'm going to do is pass in a couple of variables into this function or parameters or arguments as they're called often. Now, what I want to do is pass in a speed variable and also a time variable, right? And what we'll do is get rid of this message. And what I want to do is console.log how far you've driven, which is the speed times time, right? If we say the speed is 50 miles an hour and the time is two hours, 2 times 50 is going to be 100 miles that it's travelled, yeah? So all we'll do is console.log speed times time. And that's going to print out how many miles travelled, yeah? So what I'll do is when I call this mycar2.drive, I'm calling this function, it's expecting two variables. So what I'll do is I'll pass in the speed to be 50 miles an hour and then three hours, yeah? So let's save that. And let's refresh over here. And now I get 150, which is the distance traveled right there. Okay, guys, so that's how we create new objects in JavaScript. Uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to take this one step further and introduce the this keyword so we can use that within this object. I'll tell you all about that in the next lesson. Uh, for now, if you have any questions about this lesson, feel free to comment down below. I'll answer all of those questions. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.